Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop and I'm excited to show this one off. This is the upcoming set from Astro Knights Indie Board and Cards uh, re-theme slash redo of Aeon's End. And this one is called Astro Knights Eternity. This is a fully standalone set, although you can integrate it with the original game. I'll be uh, doing a full playthrough and then giving my thoughts at the end. And a reminder that we never accept compensation for our covering of crowdfunding games. We just want to help you make an informed decision. And if you are spoiler averse, it's going to be really light in this video. I'm going to be showing the first boss, so none of the unlockable ones, but I am going to be showing a final expedition fight, like the last one of the set. You'll see some of the uh, cards that you get to level up with, so I guess minor spoilers there. And if you like the content of the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also check out our separate streaming channel for even more content, listen to our weekly podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. So I'm not going to rehash all the mechanics of Astro Knights. You can watch an Aeon's End video since it's basically the same, or uh, one of our previous videos. I think both Callan and I have playthroughs up on the channel. But I will go through uh, the new stuff. So first of all, you're getting new characters, as you would imagine. Um, you start out with four of them, but you'll unlock more through the course of kind of like this narrative campaign you can play through. Or if you don't want to, you can just unlock it all right at the start. You get an entirely new set of market cards. And interestingly, because I was kind of wondering how they would handle this, uh, they have multiple different like ways to play with these in the rule book. You can just shuffle everything together. You can like pick and choose for each type of card. Or what I think so far is my favorite way to play, uh, just pick like one set of the game and use that. So here I'm just using the stuff from the Eternity set because there are some new mechanics. You'll see the Afterburn and Bolster mechanic, and I want those to kind of uh, come to the fore when I play with the set. So yeah, that's how I'm choosing to do it. You also get some new uh, Homeworlds, only one at first. There's all a prototype, of course, so the art isn't done yet. You get a bunch of new bosses to fight against. Again, this one I'm showing is the only one that is unlocked at the start, the Dirathian Behemoth. Uh, he's an interesting one. He just mills through his deck really quickly. He, uh, he draws two or three cards, depending on difficulty, or even, I think, four every turn. And also some of his cards will discard stuff, so he levels up and accelerates uh, very aggressively. And then finally, this is, again, like minor spoilery, but not really. They, I mean, they talk about it in the rule book. <laughs> but these are the things that you can unlock uh, if you play in the expedition mode. So a full expedition is four matches against bosses. In the second match, each player gets to pick an invention, which is a card that will not start in their deck. You still have to buy it for the cost like any other card, but it's extra powerful and only you can buy it. It kind of like hangs out until you're ready to add it to your uh, deck. Then when you get to level three, you get what are called combo cards. Each player picks a different player, although with me just controlling two characters, that's not going to be too hard. And they get a benefit every time the other player does something specific. So you can kind of like talk to each other, be like, ooh, I'm going to do a tech heavy strategy. So somebody else should take this one to benefit from that. Or uh, I'm going to be gaining a lot of weapon slots. So somebody else should uh, take this to benefit from that. So it's supposed to give more involvement between players throughout their turns. Pretty cool. And then finally, for the fourth battle, you get what's called a team attack. There are three of these so far. And these red, blue, and yellow slots are things that uh, negative things players can take upon themselves uh, once per turn. So like on my turn, I can do just one of these. I can't do all three. So for example, discard a fuel card that costs five or more, discard a tech card that costs four or more, or just deal two homeworld damage. <laughs> so these are all negative, but once the players have unlocked all three of them, they get to use the awesome power, all the tokens get taken off, and you can do it again. So it's kind of like powering up in a different way, powering up by taking damage, but you set up your team attack and do something awesome. And then again, there is a little like narrative campaign. I mean, it's, it's not really a campaign. It's just unlocking stuff and giving you some narrative to kind of tie it all together. I really enjoyed it, though. I'll talk about that more in my impressions. But uh, let's get to the gameplay. So because I'm treating it as the final match in a expedition mode, so like the fourth fight, uh, I'm going to have everything unlocked. So we'll all have a combo card, an invention, and we'll all have a shared team attack. And it tells you how tough the bosses should be. So I'm doing a slightly tougher than normal expedition. Um, I would have to fight the Dirathian Behemoth on expert mode if I was like not just on normal difficulty. Uh, nightmare mode on like level two difficulty. And uh, would they have a new apocalypse <laughs> difficulty mode? I'm not going that high. So on nightmare mode, um, this guy is going to draw and resolve two extra cards. He's doing three cards a turn. And he's already discarded about half his deck to start out because we have two players. And yeah, he just uh, summons kind of weenie minions and does like attacks on you and the homeworld. That's kind of his ho whole deal. Um, yeah, he's great. Oh, and one more thing before we start the play. I do want to show you the two new major uh, mechanics for player cards. So first you've got Afterburn. These cards give you a once per turn power while they're in your discard pile. And man, I really like this. <laughs> As you'll see during the uh, play, I think it's a really cool concept. 
So for example, if I had played Perpetuum Battery on my turn, on all future turns, because it wouldn't be in my discard until the end of the turn, during my main phase, once per turn, I can gain just one extra energy to buy stuff until I have to shuffle my deck. So uh, that's how that works. And then the other new keyword, also on this one, is Bolster. And this is an effect that you resolve when you discard a card on somebody else's turn. So if my friend played a card that was like any player discards a card to give me a bonus, I could be like, hey, I'll discard my Perpetuum Battery, but actually I'm getting to draw a card. Ooh, and now I'll have it in my uh, discard for my Afterburn. So it kind of makes uh, these uh, interesting choices of like who discards for certain effects become more fun. Uh, although it does only apply during an ally turn. So like if the boss makes you discard a card, you're not getting any uh, bolster bonuses from that. And to briefly meet my other characters, I've got Reshi. She's like the mechanic on the ship in the narrative. Her unique card uses that uh, after a mechanic. It's only a regular one energy. But while it's in the discard, you may place a card you gain this turn on top of your deck. Once per turn, she can uh, put things right on top of her deck. Then her special ability, activate during your main phase, power up the homeworld. Then an ally draws cards equal to the amount of power the homeworld has. Uh, pretty cool. By the way, she, you'll see, has very few slots, so she's never going to be a weapon powerhouse. And in terms of expedition content, she's got a Molten Core she can buy for three, which is going to give her two energy, but also let her power up once every turn that it's in her discard. I'm basically going to try to make her like an afterburn bolster kind of person. And then for her combo, Nebula Storm, which will go with my other character. When that player deals five or more damage on a turn, because I'm going to try to make the other one my weapon person, return a card from your discard pile to your hand. Pretty awesome. Then my other character is Sana, I guess is how you pronounce that. Her unique card is Booster Boot. She's like the security officer on the ship. Uh, when she equips it, she gains a weapon slot. Ridiculous. Um, and then uh, when she attacks, she deals one damage. Although she starts with zero slots, so she's an interesting one. And her special ability also plays with slots. Uh, during her main phase, she attacks with all her weapons. Those would be the ones she equipped that turn, potentially. Then she can lose any number of slots, including zero, to return that many weapons from her discard pile to her hand. So she can get like double use out of them, throw away slots just to build them back up. So of course I gave her a weapon for her invention, Relay Dagger, uh, attacked. Oh, by the way, this is all prototype. Clearly they're just using placeholder art. So for five uh, energy, deal four damage. Any ally may discard a card. If they do, return this to your hand, because I'm uh, assuming that Reshi will have a lot of those afterburners and bolsters. So she might not uh, dis mind discarding a card. And then Alpha Formation, when uh, Reshi plays or equips two cards that cost one or more energy on a turn, you gain one health. That just seemed like a nice, uh, <laughs> solid, consistent one. I can have Sana take uh, more of the damage for us and try to stay alive. So that's everybody. Let's uh, jump right into the game. Oh, and last thing I should probably show, Durath is the first uh, new homeworld you get. So it needs two to power up and you can gain three health and any player gains a weapon slot, which seems to go well with Sana's abilities. This one, give everything you've got. Uh, discard a fuel to cost four or more. Power down twice. Shouldn't be too hard with that Reshi Molten Core. And discard a card that costs five or more. That's got to hurt. But then we can deal 12 damage. Woo! <laughs> I like that. Ultra attack! All right, here we go. How oh, great. We're starting off with the Behemoth turn. So again, because he's on Nightmare Mode, we're going to draw three cards on each of his turns at level one. Wee! So first, Frozen Bellow. Any player suffers three damage or discard three cards from the boss deck. Ah, oh, man. Three damage right off the bat is not great, but I don't want to <laughs> advance him to level two too quickly. Sana's got that healing ability, so she's going to be my meat sponge for a little while. And card two, Tear. The Homeworld suffers two damage. It's got 30. Not too bad. Or I should say it had 30. Uh-oh. And then three. Ah, oh, there's a minion. I was wondering. Snowdrift Lurker. Uh, there's all that tend to have like two or three hearts. So every time it activates, the Homeworld suffers one damage. We'll... Certainly want to deal with that soon. But that's it for the boss turn, and Reshi is up. So nothing too fancy. She's going to equip her blaster, of course, and then she's got four to spend. And yeah, I kind of feel like I should just get uh, <laughs> my Molten Core right off the bat. Although that only costs three. Maybe i go for the Perpetuum Battery first. It's got a bolster to go with Sana's uh, Relay Dagger and has consistent money gain from uh, Afterburn. So that's pretty great. Yeah, we'll get that. Now note that her Afterburn to put one card on top of her deck instead of her discard pile does not apply until it's actually in her discard pile. Right now it just played. And I'm going to uh, have the discard pile kind of tilted. Now the cool thing is... Oh, I bought this immediately, which means I get one money this turn because <laughs> I could use it once per turn. Not going to help when I have zero money left, but uh, that's pretty great. And of course, I want to keep my afterburns as close to the uh, bottom or top, whatever it is, of my deck so I get to use them quickly. So next turn, I'll have an extra money and whatever I buy can go straight to the top of my deck. Seems like a pretty good thing to me. And now it's Sana's turn. If it's Tisana, I apologize. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. So I think, I mean, 
I hate to say a telegraphed first turn, but I feel like this is a telegraphed first turn because I got zero slots and two weapons. So I'll spend three money to buy a slot, and then I'll equip the booster boots to gain a slot, and then I'll equip the blaster. <laughs> I think that's just how that first turn is supposed to go. It'll get more interesting later, I guess. Oh, yeah, Sana had two blasters waiting in her deck, too, so it definitely needed them. And we're jumping back over to Behemoth Boy. So first, this lurker throws a snowball at the Durath City. And then we're up to three cards again. Oh, God, another lurker. Gotta start attacking. Oh, my gosh. Frostbite Bilax. Discard a card from the boss deck to accelerate them, and any player suffers one damage when they activate. Only two life, though, so they hopefully won't live long. And third, what is going on? Any player suffers one damage. Oh, my gosh. All right, we got to we gotta pause for a minute and get some, <laughs> get some attack going here. But hey, at least that's it for the boss for now. We're back to Sana. All right, they can do two damage. Let's keep the booster boots higher. So one, two. And I guess we'll kill the Frostbite Bilac since we can. Okay, then uh, Sana will equip both blasters. That's not too exciting. And then three. Doesn't need more weapon slots yet. So Dark Matter Core would be two energy. And while it's in the discard, you may discard a card to power up the home world, which is going to heal us and give free weapon slots. Or Taze Tethers. Deal two damage. Ooh, any ally may discard a card. I think Reshi already got a bolster card, right? If they do increase the damage. Yeah, I think we need some attack going on. We're going to buy that. All right, so that was all three. We're back to our original cards. Two more weapons and gaining a slot. All righty. And finally, we know it's going to be Reshi. I guess she'll shoot with a blaster? Sure. Um, Rather us not be taking damage early on, so I'll attack those guys. And she'll equip another blaster. Four money. Oh, five money. And anything I buy can go to the top of my deck. Hmm, what have we got? Nano repair bots. The homeworld powers up. Any ally may destroy a card in their hand or discard pile. I mean, that's always good. What's the afterburn? The homeworld gains one health. Wow, that's really nice. Or atomic echo. If I have to discard it from one of Sana's effects, I'll draw two cards. Or it just gets me three. There's no six weapon. I really like early destruction. And we got two people who are going to be hitting the homeworld. Sure. We'll really go all afterburn for her and go and get the nano repair bots. Now, this is the interesting question. It's, uh, I may, <laughs> with the other afterburn, I may place a card I gain this turn on top of my deck. Because if I don't, this will be in my discard pile immediately and the homo can gain one health. Is that better than me being sure I'm going to draw this as the last card? Which means the afterburn won't go off otherwise. Yeah, I guess it is better for me to make it the first card I draw next time and get it near the top of my deck. All right. So we'll do that. And I still want to buy that uh, Molten Core soon. All right, we're back through the deck. No. Yeah, Jumper right to Nightmare. Maybe it was a bad choice. <laughs> but again, I wanted to show you one of the final fights. Homeworld suffers two damage. Any player suffers one. We'll do it to Reshi this time since she's at full life. Three more fun cards. In case in ice. The Homeworld suffers three or discard three cards. Nope, Homeworld, you just take it and like it. Encasing the entire city in ice. Ouch. Number two, Crush. We have to discard two cards. I'll look at that in a second. I mean, Sana is like bought next to nothing. There is a cheap weapon that only costs two. So, okay, she can discard one. And then, huh, let's discard the Perpetuum Battery. Because I get to draw a replacement card for the Bolster. Oh, no, that's right. Bolster is only when an ally makes me discard it. But still, it is plus one money. So I'd only really be losing one money in the wash. Or Mirror Matter will let me buy a card and put it right on top of my deck. That even seems better. Um, Okay, one more card. Yay. Right. Okay, well, at least uh, no more minions. Player with the most slots suffers two damage and discards a card. Ugh, it's going to be Sana. Um, but the good thing is her alpha formation is going to trigger on uh, Reshi's next turn because she has two cards that cost one or more. That's right, she had to discard a card. Um, I want to be able to buy something, so I'll discard a blaster. All right, and it is Sana's turn. So I'd like to sometimes just keep blasters, but there's a guy who's almost dead. So I guess... Let's go ahead and hit that uh, enemy twice for two damage. This uh, white fur flock. Kill them. And how much damage she has to do for uh, Reshi to benefit? Five. So that was not it. <laughs> okay, she'll equip Blaster Boots, which gets her to a third slot. Pretty wild. And she's got two. Yeah, it's not too impressive, but Astromag Pistol. Attack, deal two damage, and fewer, five, fewer than five cards in hand. Increase that damage by one. Seems with uh, both the boss and us making us discard cards a lot, that might happen. And there's her new weapon. All right. Oh, man, again. All right, so it's two more to the home world, which is a 20 and then three cards. Rip. Homeworld suffers one damage. Discard a card from the boss. Great. And then, all right, so they are not going to level up until we go through a whole set of turns. That part's good, at least. 
Smash. Player with the least slot suffers one damage. Another player loses a slot. Actually, that could have been a lot worse because Sana can deal with two slots and get them back pretty quickly, and Reshi has a lot of health. All right, and last card for now, Rend. Any player discards a card and suffers one damage. Hmm. <sighs> My first thought is to have Reshi discard the Perpetuum Battery, but that's going to take away her ability to play two cards that have a cost to give Sana some healing. Uh, so yeah, I'll have Sana discard and take a damage. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Okay, now it's Reshi. Um, should she shoot? She doesn't need to yet. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'd rather have more Afterburn cards near the uh, top of my deck, so she's not going to shoot yet. So I can uh, place the first card I buy, or a card I buy, on top of my deck. I've got two, three, four money. Now let's go and use this. The Homeward Power is up, and any ally may destroy a card in their hand or discard pile. sana has got a basic power core in her discard pile, and Reshi only has a cool card. All right, so the Homeworld's halfway to healing us, and I've got four money. Let's see. Hollow Projector. Any player may destroy a card in their hand or discard pile, and any player gains a slot. Uh, I don't know if we need that. We already have some slot gain. Yeah, and the homeworld already gives us slot gain as well, so, hmm. Oh, wait, wait, I forgot about the Molten Core. I'll buy that for, uh, for three. So that means now I can use its afterburn, power myself up. It's great. I mean, I'm going to have so much powering up. Um, yeah, and I got one money left. Can't do anything with that. Let's put all the afterburns near the top of my eventual discard pile. And I want to get as many cards as possible now and really, like, not call so that <laughs> those effects can last a while. Oh, there's Reshi again. So this time I will shoot somebody because I gotta. It's all the same to Behemoth. By the way, I forgot. I could have put the card I bought on top of my deck, but I wanted to get the uh, power of ability. All right, so let's use all my afterburns. So I power up. I've got plus one energy. The homeworld heals one, which is good because it's gotten beat up quite a bit. Ooh, I forgot. I forgot. Uh, Sana should have healed one from her alpha formation last turn because I played two cards that cost at least one, which is sadly not going to happen this time. All right, so I'll equip my blaster and then... Uh, I've used all the abilities, so I've got one, two, three, four, five. I want to get some bigger weapons. Come on. It's Atomic Echo. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I need more money, apparently, to get the big weapons that I really want. All right, so she's buying this for five. She will put it on top of her deck, so she's going to get that money right off the bat. And unfortunately, all my discard is going away. Sadness. So yeah, she'll need another turn to get all those into her discard. Although, actually, I need to get Sana more things and make people discard. But her taste tethers do, and then if she buys her relay dagger, that does too. So it'll be happening eventually. All right, we finish with a Sana turn. Definitely going to do one damage to get that one enemy close to dead. This uh, snowdrift lurker. And then she'll equip the taze tethers. How many slots did she have? I think it was two. Three energy. I kind of want to buy another weapon, but I'm worried about her overall economy. So let's get the uh, dark matter core. What's I going to let her do? You may discard a card to power up the home world. Hmm. Uh, that won't happen this time <laughs> because she has to have already used all of her cards, but she can do it next turn if she wants to. Oh, geez. With all those random weapons, I think she'll definitely be doing it. All right. Uh, darn it. So Behemoth's going to level up before he draws. Oh, first got to activate uh, one damage, two damage to the homeworld again. It's down to 18. And then what are we doing? All, all the minions gain one health. And now, oh my gosh, three additional cards. That's four cards a turn. Help us. I didn't have to play on this hard of a difficulty, but I'm doing it. All right, here we go. Polar Gorefly. This discarded a card from the boss deck. It's not terrible. Number two, Frozen Bellow. Discard three cards or one player suffers three damage. Ah, I'm going to discard the cards, I think. All right, and then Rend. Any player discards a card and suffers one damage. Let's see. Reshi can... Oh, that's right. We don't get Bolster unless it's on... Unless it's on a player turn. Ooh, but uh, getting one of my afterburn effects is totally fine. Although at the same time, one money is going to do nothing for Sana and all these blasters as well. So yeah, she might as well discard something. I think it makes more sense. All right. And it is Sana's turn. First, she's going to use the Taze Tethers. A two damage and any ally may discard a card to increase that damage by two. Definitely doing that. And this one will let us bolster. So do we want a little bolster... If we bolster with a Perpetuum Battery, we get to draw a card, and we'll be getting one energy on Reshi's next turn. If we bolster with the Atomic Echo, she'll draw two cards, but won't get the boost, and three money's a lot. So yeah, we're going to do the Perpetuum Battery. So she draws a replacement. Man, she got a lot of afterburns. That's doing four damage straight up. I'll get rid of one of the uh, Homeworld people. All right, and then... Pff, yeah, this is not the best. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and load up the two weapons we can. Uh, use the afterburn, discard this to power up the homeworld. Oh, now we can spend it. Ooh, ooh, let's do this. Hold on, uh, so let's actually not discard the blast, let's discard the random uh, power core. Because look, any player gains three health and any player gains a slot. 
That will do three health on Sana and a slot on Sana. Boom. Now she can actually equip all three of these weapons. Unfortunately, it's still not going to quite do... Oh, wait. It might do five damage, which would trigger our Reshi's combo card. Because the automatic pistol is two damage. And if you have fewer than five cards in hand, increase the damage by one. So she just needs to find a way to discard a card before her turn. You want to get some money to actually get something good. <laughs> All right. Oh, boss again. So that's uh, Homeworld suffers a damage. And a 17. It's not great. And he discards for free. And then he's playing four cards. Did I play four cards last time or did I only play three? <laughs> I feel like I might have missed one. All right. We got a white fur pack. We got another white fur pack. Any more hearts? Okay. We got Rip. Homeworld suffers a damage. Discard a card from the boss deck. And fourth, definitely this time, Crush. We have to discard two cards between the players. Oh, good. That'll help uh, Sana get her ability. All right, Areshi will go ahead and get her Mirror Matter, put a card straight to the top of her deck going. And then uh, I want to get the free slot, so I guess uh, Sana will just discard a Power Core. All right, these boss turns are getting pretty nasty. That's Reshi. So she can see them something for one. Oh, she doesn't have a new weapon coming. I don't think I'm going to care about it. How about this one? Homeworld powers up. Any ally may destroy a card in their hand or discard pile. Oh, good. Sana will get rid of the uh, Power Core she just got rid of. Okay, and then we're getting two... Three, four, five, six, seven energy. Ooh, what can we get? Uh, unfortunately, we can't afford the sword breaker. Do you want to get her something stronger? HOV artillery. Ooh, bolster. Deal one damage or a quarter, turn a card from your disco pile to your hand or just deal five damage. That seems excellent for her. We'll get this and it'll go to the top of her deck. Best part. Um, Yeah. All right. So we'll put, now we're going to power up every turn and the home world's going to gain one health every turn until she has to uh, <laughs> reshuffle, which hopefully won't be soon. Ah, we got too many weapons. Maybe she can uh, increase her slots soon. Ah, but first, Sana's up. All right, so y'all gonna do this. Uh, three, f oh, that's right. Um, Reshi definitely played at least two cards. So she's getting that. And then yeah, Blaster. So she's doing five damage total. Three and then one and then one. So let's do uh, three, one, one, I guess. All right, and that means that Nebula or Reshi gets to return a card from your disco pile to your hand. Oh, wow. Well. Ooh, let's get Atomic Echo back, I guess. That way we don't lose any Afterburner abilities. She'll have a ton of money again. All right, that was pretty cool. We'll go ahead and get another slot. So she wants to use her power soon, theoretically. Dark Matter Core. Oh, that's the one that lets her uh, power up the home world. Okay, so she's got four money left. Yeah, I really wish she had one more money. <laughs> I guess I do want her to get more powers. Gain two, deal two damage, gain one health. You may destroy the top card of any supply deck. It's not great for her, but it's something. Oh, gee, she's not even going to use her afterburn one turn. She's immediately <laughs> trod back up. Ooh, but lots of weapons she can use. That'll be good. And finally, Reshi. All right, so this time she will deal one damage. Kill off the Snowdrift Lurker. At some point, I promise, we will actually fight the boss, maybe. All right, what are all her powers? She powers up for free, so we'll use that in a second. Um, the Homeworld gains one health. That's it to 17. Uh, we can put something on top of our deck, and we get plus one money. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and load. I guess I want to get another slot. So she's got three, four, five, six with plus one, seven. So three leaves her with four. And now she can equip both of these. And she will go ahead and use her power. So first she powers up the homeworld, bringing it to two. And then it says any ally draws cards equal to that power, which means Sana. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's too many blasters, even for her. By the way, I'm not sure if I'm reading the power correctly. The sound is it says, when the player plays or equips two cards that cost one or more on a turn, you gain one health. So is that, I guess, plays or equips? I don't think that it has to be a pair of one or the other. I'm assuming it's both, so I think Sana gets a health again. Seems like a really easy ability to fire off, especially late game. All right, what do I do with the four? Like, I want, <laughs> I want all these better cards. Uh, I could get the hollow projector, but we don't really need that many slots. Destroying cards is always good, of course. Ah, eh, crud. I guess I'll get the Aust uh, Astromag pistol on top of her deck. Oh, and there's a four-cost thing. All right, so she's got two left. Eh, another money that also powers her up seems good. <laughs> Boss first. We got this point. Discard a card from his deck, and any player suffers one damage. Put it on Sana since she heals. This is a damage I'm not worried about. I'm worried about all the rest of this stuff. <laughs> okay. Frostbite Bilax. It's one that discards a card and deals damage. That's one. Stomp. Any player dis uh, suffers two damage and discard a card from the boss deck. That's two. Sign will take the damage again. Three. Uh, Homeward's left with one damage and powers down. Oh, man. Did I forget to activate the... Well, whatever. <laughs> I did forget to activate it. And four. Any player powers down and suffers one damage. Both at zero power, so it's just the damage. Yeah, we'll have it be Sana again, I guess. Okay, and Reshi's up. Now we can actually do some damage. Uh, five damage. I'll certainly do that. 
I guess she'll just blast one of these guys because he's near to uh, reshuffling his deck. One of the ones that discards things uh, from the boss deck seems good. And then she can blast her this guy near death, I think. All right, and then she's going to use uh, her Perpetuum battery, equip that. That should heal Sana, I think. So what is that, five money? All right, remote detonator. Ooh, four damage, then any player will return a bolster card from their discard pile to their hand. She's got some powerful ones. That seems great. Sadly, she does not have her put on top of her deck ability right now. It's about to come out. Yep, there it is. <laughs> All right, and Sana's up. Only doing a single point of damage. That's not great. We'll get this guy near death. But then, hey, she can equip one, two, three, four weapons. Not sure what to do with that extra blaster, unfortunately. She's got two energy. What do we do with that? There's no cards to buy for that much, so we're just doing that. Okay, and we can discard cards. So let's get this blaster out. I think Reshi has her trash a card thing. We're definitely going to trash a blaster away. And we're drawn up to five. I mean, Sana has a lean deck. If we can get some stronger attacks in there, it'd be great. Ah, Reshi again. All right, so she doesn't have fewer than five cards. We're just going to do two damage. Yeah, I think boss has five cards left, so any discard effect could cause it to level up earlier. So she's going to waste an attack and kill that guy. All right, then she can equip that. She's got one, two, three, four, five money. She can have the Homeworld power-up, so it's ready to use. Let's actually use it this time. I guess she'll heal herself, because Sana's about to heal one anyway. Sure, waste a little bit. Homeworld also lets us gain a slot, but we don't have any space for him. Can any ally may destroy a card in their hand or discard pile? Sadly, Sana just shuffled her discard pile, and I don't want to destroy an energy core, because then she won't have enough to get the four-cost weapon that's in the offer. So I'm not going to use it. That was kind of a waste of a card. Um, in fact, actually, maybe we, maybe we don't power up the homeworld. Hold on. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to discard this uh, for our big uh, partner attack thing. Because now I can use its power to give the homeworld one health. And that's a card that costs five or more. So, boom. Um, we are, yeah, going to be close to dealing, closer to dealing 12 damage. And yeah, the homeworld heals. That means that Sana won't get an extra health this turn, though. That's okay. And we got five energy total. So, yes, we got this Atmos Scope. Uh, to deal some damage. Seems good. We need to get... And once again, we can't put it on top of our deck. Uh, so we'll get those going now, though. Yes, again, we will get one turn to actually use all her cool uh, afterburn powers. Oh, and Sana again, and then the boss. All right, so yeesh. Uh, do a lot of damage. We, we're finally going to hit the boss. This is great. Let's do Taze Tethers first. So that is deal two damage. Any ally may discard a card. If they do, increase that damage by two. So that'll be four. And she's got some bolsters... We use our cell five, six, seven, eight, nine money. So she could bolster, but then, oh no, wait, if she draws two from Atomic Echo, you know what? She's actually going to throw away a power core and not use any bolster. I want to have enough to buy the sword breaker uh, weapon. So four kills the white fur pack. So any extra damage we deal now is actually hitting the boss for real. Although only for four damage, not that much. But it's something, we're on the board, making it happen. And then uh, I could buy something or power up. I'm going to buy something. So, well, we'll equip uh, both of these first. So, gaining a slot doesn't help us at all. Then for four, you get this double shot. Deal two damage, then deal two damage to a minion. And if you boost it, it affects both attacks. Although I don't think we have any boost right now. She almost had enough to get the, there it is, relay dagger. Oh, uh, and she definitely did at least five damage. Which means Reshi can turn a card from her discard pile to hand. She still has eight money. Ooh, let's get the Atmoscope uh, or the remote detonator. Oh, or the HOV artillery. Um. Yeah, I think HV Artillery is going to be the best. There we go. Finally getting some combos going. Oh, and some big attacks. This is good. But now the boss goes. But hey, we've actually cleared out their stuff. So let's see. Players collectively power down twice. Only Sana has any power. So that was pretty much a waste boss. Mwahaha. In case in ice. The homeworld suffers three damage or we have to discard three cards. We don't want to do that because... If I'm reading the rules correctly, I think we're going to waste almost an entire turn. Players collectively discard two cards. Hmm. Neither of us has anything that lets us do cool stuff. You know what? Whatever. Uh, Sana's is going to discard her two power cords and not spend any money this turn. That's fine. That's fine. And last one is a Polar Gore Fly. Activate, discard a card from the boss deck. Oh, crud. We got to kill him. So here's the thing I'm not sure about. Um, so, like, the rules say if you enter the draw phase um, and the deck is empty, you power up or level up. So I wonder, this says he draws and resolves three additional cards from the boss deck. Like, when does he level up? I don't know. We'll, we'll uh, interpret it the worst way and say he levels up again in the middle of the boss phase and gets extra. But maybe that's wrong. Prototype, we don't know. Either way, here we go. It's Sana. 
All right. All she's got is weapons and weapons. Uh, deal two damage, gain one health. You may destroy the top card of a supply deck. Deal one damage. Okay, so it's just three damage total, and she's healing. Uh, fine. We'll do the Polar God Gorefly. And she can trash something from a supply deck. Uh -huh. Well, I guess the Hollow Projector is kind of boring. Let's get rid of that. Oh my gosh. Gigaboard seven. Any ally draws two cards. Any ally may discard a card. If they do, you power up twice. That's pretty cool. I don't think we'll ever buy it, but it's cool. And boom, boom, boom. Big damage coming. Hopefully even more, sort of. Gosh, I cannot get this card to ever go to my discard. Oh, there we go. Rushy's up. Oh, nice. She's got a blaster to kill that uh, little leftover guy. No, and I forgot all her power. So she can power up for free. Oop. Uh, I can place a card. You gain this turn on top of your deck. Homeworld gains one health. And she gets one free money. Nice. Homeworld's uh, 15, halfway to dead. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll get this. And here's what we wanted. Sword Breaker. So it deals seven damage. You may discard two equipped weapons to return this card to your hand. Oh, that's actually harder to use than I realized. Still going to get it. It'll be my top card. But uh, two equipped weapons? Yeah, I mean, she has... Uh, darn, actually, uh, maybe I'm not buying that. Maybe I'm not buying that. Hmm. Huh. Maybe I get the, the dumb gigaboard instead? <laughs> sure. Sure. I mean, powering up twice will let us, even if not using her thing, will let us use the uh, the team attack more. All right, we'll buy that. Feels a bit anticlimactic, but so it goes. And now we lose all our cool powers. Oh, we definitely, yeah, we definitely played enough stuff for Sonic to gain health. All right, next is the boss. So again, we're going to assume that he, like, keeps drawing. So uh, first one, Homeworld suffers two damage. It's okay. We've been keeping that pretty healed. Um, and then he levels up to level three, which is not any different except plus one more life for every minion. Oh, crap. That's his last level, though, isn't it? We got to kill this guy. Homer suffers three damage or discard three cards from the boss deck. Nope. We're not <laughs> going to deck ourselves out that quickly. Okay. Guys, got five life and smash. Player with least slots suffers one damage. Another player loses a slot. All right. We'll get to that. That's fine. Like, really not a big deal. We have a ton of life. So, actually, I'm definitely going to leave that uh, one wolf pack in uh, play and just shoot the boss more. Of course, the boss might go again. Yay! So, one player loses the damage. We'll make it Sana. And then, good lord, four more cards. Okay, any player in the home world suffer uh, damage. Uh, we can probably let that guy stay alive, too. Uh, the homeworld suffers one damage. Okay, this is definitely too many homeworld suffers damage people. <laughs> that was two. Uh, the players could discard two cards. Uh, Reshi's going to do the Perpetuum Battery because you got to draw a card and have money anyway, and Sun will do a blaster. All right, and last one. The Homeworld suffers one damage. Okay, yeah, we guess we can't just leave the Homeworld to die and discard a card from the boss deck. All right. Okay, but now it's Reshi. Come on. All right, deal five damage. Just go into the boss, I think. We, we got to go to the face. I think. <laughs> Only way we can survive. All right, any ally draws two cards. So that'll be Sana. Now, what else is it? Any ally may discard a card. Sure, she got a power core. And if they do, you power up twice. Awesome. All right, and then she'll load up her weapons. Uh, and she's got two. Uh, let's see. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to power down twice. Gets her to one power. And then she'll spend her two energy. Oh, that's right. She has three energy. Ah, whatever. I'm still just going to power up. All right, so those all go away. Oh, and there's a lot of her afterburn things. They've definitely gotten mixed in the deck a bit. Okay, and Sana's up. Uh, what we got? Two damage, an ally can increase it. All right, so we'll do the Taze Tethers first. That'll be four after she discards. Ast Astromag Pistol will be six. Blaster will make it seven. Why don't you get a discard? Put something on top of my deck. Homeworld gains a health. Uh, it does seem important, but now we'll do this one. And yeah, forget the minions. Forget the minions. Uh, wait, 51 minus seven, 44. Yes. <laughs> Okay, let's equip the double shot. Let's equip the blaster. Unfortunately, there's not a four uh, fuel, or we could fire off the 12 damage thing. So she's got four energy. I mean, she could do her thing. Let's her, like, double shoot her weapons. That seems pretty good. Yeah, let's do that. So two power up. Start getting toward it. And once again, she doesn't have enough cards in her deck to ever take advantage of that power. That's fine. At least we're getting weapons, although her weapons are not that great. We're back to a new set of turns. This could be bad, people. This could be very, very bad. All right, what is it? One player suffers a damage. Homeworld suffers a damage. Homeworld... Oh, and a player. So two damage to the homeworld. Down to seven. And two to us. Oh, uh, Reshi. Sana did do f plus five, more than five damage last turn. So Reshi should have gotten something back from her discard pile. Oh, let's do the... The Gigaboard or the, the HOV? Let's do the HOV Artillery. Or actually, no, 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 no. Let's do this. Let's get the Perpetuum Battery back because that's a four cost fuel she can discard, still get the plus one money from it, and uh, fire off the give it everything you've got uh, combo attack. All right, sorry, now back to the boss turn. 
feel like Sana should have healed. By the way, it's fine. I feel like the home world is the one I'm worried about. Okay, discard a card from the boss deck. Uh, whatever. Not as worried about one card as the four every turn. Players discard two cards. Let's see. Uh, I actually want to keep Sana's cards. So we'll just have the homeworld start gaining health earlier. Don't want to do Perpetuum and a Power Core. Bye-bye. I think that was number two. Claire is powered down twice. Reshi will do it because we don't want to lose uh, Sana firing off her power. And discard a card from the boss deck. Ah, oh, crud. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We just got to hurry. Okay, and Sana's up. I think I'm going to finally use her power. So we'll do this first. A double shot. Two damage, then two to a minion, and blaster is one. Wah, wah. All right, the two is going to certainly be on the boss. And then we have to do two to a minion, so might as well do these guys. And then one more to the boss. Well, these guys are kind of cruddy. Let's get rid of one of theirs. Okay, and then here we go. We're going to equip these, which raises their slots back up to four. And then um, she's going to spend two to power up. And then she's going to activate, attack with all her weapons. And then she can lose any number of slots, return the many weapons from her discard pile to her hand. So she's doing one, two, and gaining a health. Um, I can destroy a top card, who cares? So that's one, two, three, four damage. We'll do three of the boss, but kill that guy. And then get rid of two slots to get both of those cards back and play them. I don't know. It's a choice. It's a choice. <laughs> now hopefully we don't draw like four weapons right here. Ah, three, but one we don't care about. That's fine. Oh, and that was definitely at least five damage, so Reshi will pull back Gigaboard or the Artillery. She already got five, two decent weapons. Let's do the Gigaboard. All right, and ooh, Reshi's up. Okay, so she's shooting for five, and any player can return a bolster from the discard pile to their hand. Ooh, which counts her Artillery, so I guess she's getting it back anyway. And yeah, we're just going to keep ignoring these guys and hope we don't die. Okay, then probably her most important afterburn, she's healing the Homeworld one. And... All right, I'm going to uh, discard the Perpetuum Battery, which we'll get we one money. To get this bad boy, 12 more damage. Okay, that makes it seem a little bit more possible. All right, and uh, so she's got, oh, she got exactly one uh, energy, never mind. She'll uh, equip her best weapons, use the Giga Board to let Sana draw two cards. And Sana has way more weapons than she can equip. So she's going to discard one to let Reshi power up twice. She doesn't do anything at the moment, but it sounds kind of nice. All right, and then uh, I guess she won't discard the Astromag pistol. Why should she? It's money and weakness. Okay, whatever. I imagine the boss is probably, yep. Or if we can survive this, maybe we'll be okay. Okay, player suffers one damage. Homeworld. Okay, homeworld. Discard boss cards. Okay, so it's just one damage to the homeworld. One to a player. We'll do Sana, who should have gained a life from Reshi, definitely. So <laughs> we'll just leave that. And four cards. Okay. Player with most slots suffers two damage and discards a card. Huh, they're actually tied. Um, so we'll say Sana, and she can discard one of her monies. Okay, second, Snowdrift Lurker, fine. Third, any player discards a card and suffers at one damage. Oh my gosh, we only got like one more turn of this guy going. Um, Sana will take a damage and discard the Blaster she can't play. And fourth, any player suffers two damage and discard a card from the boss deck. I will do Reshi this time. All right, so yeah, the boss deck has six cards left, which means assuming nothing else discards, the two Polar Gore Flies will get it down to four cards, and then he would play them all, but he wouldn't level up yet. Uh, let's try to kill him. Player one. Um, okay. Flashbang and attack. Flashbang heals her. Two damage. Two damage, two to a minion. All right. So that's four to the boss. Gets him to 18. Come on. Two to a minion. Man, I don't know. <laughs> that was definitely five damage. So Reshi gets a card back. She's always good. Um, your remote detonator is the strongest attack she has. So let's put that in her hand. Okay. And then level up or equip, equip. Three money, we're just going to get a slot. All right. I just knocked my uh, health, so not sure if that's where it was, but I think it was probably close. All right, Reshi's last, and we just got to hope we get turns before the boss does next. All right, all right, all right. Uh, so five damage to the boss, four damage to the boss, and ally may discard a card if they do deal two damage to a minion. Eh, we don't need to do that. <laughs> so just nine damage. Yes, yes. And remote detonator and astromag that heals Sana one. And, oh, God, what powers do we have? <laughs> I got to keep reshuffling it. Get one money. Oh, heal the homeworld one. And place a card you gain on top of your deck. So one money, two, three, four, five. I don't think we're going to have time to get that off again. I don't even know if we're going to have time to, like, have another real turn again. But sure, what the hey, she'll buy an Atmos scope and put it on top of her deck. Oh, which actually, this is good. It means that she does not have to shuffle yet. All right, this is kind of it, I think. If the boss, like, goes once, maybe we survive. If they go twice, we lose. If... Like Reshi and Sana can both go. We can probably deal that last uh, little bit of nine damage. All right, shuffle this like three times. Come on, please don't. No, okay, it's fine, it's fine. It's one. I think we can survive. I think we can survive. Uh, okay. 
Uh, player suffers a damage. Homeward suffers two. I will make Sana suffer one. And then two discards. But again, I think we might be okay. Let's see. Player suffers one. Uh, Homeward suffers one damage and power's down. Okay, it's one. Homeward suffers one damage. No, discard a card from the boss deck. No. So again, I'm not sure if we're playing right and if you're supposed to level up. But Frozen Bellow, any player suffers three damage. We could certainly tank that. But then we can't play the fourth card. So I think he levels up and we lose. Let's see. Would we have won? Okay, Reshi would have gone. What would that have been? Four, uh, six damage. And then, ah, Sana. Okay, so we, again, I'm not sure if I'm playing it right, but <laughs> we, we might have lost. We'll just call it a draw. I don't know. So let me get into my thoughts on the new expansion. So I'll keep this as simple as I can, as straightforward as I can. If they were going to do anything with Astronauts, if they were going to make any kind of expansion, any kind of content, this is exactly what I wanted them to make. <laughs> like literally, uh, at least from my taste, this is the perfect expansion. Let me kind of expand on why. So first of all, uh, all the bosses, I think, are cool, uh, especially like the last one. I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything, but the last one has really neat mechanics, like thematically and mechanically. But even like this basic behemoth guy is kind of interesting in what he does. I like the new characters uh, pretty well. There's actually an even cooler one I didn't use because he feels slightly broken. This guy, Zach, he, when he powers up, he gives people scope tokens, which give them like permanent damage uh, for their first shot or their first attack each round for the rest of the game, unless he uses other ability to do 15 damage. So he feels a little unbalanced. That's why I didn't use him in the playthrough. But yeah, generally the new characters, again, I won't spoil any of the other ones, but even the four basic ones you unlock at first, they're pretty fun. The new player cards. I didn't know if I would ever say this. I I've been on the record many times saying that I find uh, like the Aeon's End player cards and even the basic Astronauts cards not that interesting in terms of deck building. And maybe I missed something like this Afterburn and Bolster mechanic in a previous Aeon's End expansion. I didn't play all of them. But I love this because, first of all, it just feels cool to get like uh, powers over and over again. Also, it actively challenges the kind of paradigm of all deck builders where you want to call because the more cards you keep in your deck, the more often you get to fire off your afterburns. And then the bolster thing kind of making the sting of like players helping each other out by discarding cards not hurt as much. I love these new mechanics in the cards. I think it's it's really fun. Um, and I, I got to say, I like how they're doing the kind of deck combo where I just can play with this or just play with something else. It still makes us set up a breeze compared to Aeon's End uh, in multiple ways. So, yeah, I think this is great. I, I'm really I did not expect to say I would be impressed by the new player cards in Astronauts. And they're still like, you know, somewhat basic, but definitely the afterburn and bolster effect. A plus. Good job, y'all. Then the last thing is the narrative campaign and unlocking stuff. This is literally, oh, and I should say the expedition mode. This is the same as what they did with, uh, what is it, New Age and uh, Outcast, I think it was. And I loved those uh, standalone sets. Those are the ones I tell everyone to buy if they're going to buy Aeon's End. Because first of all, the narrative is pretty cool. I, I actually really like the story. I didn't show you any of it, but it's like these uh, people kind of becoming the new Astronites. Like no one believes the Astronites existed, sort of like Jedi Order-ish kind of stuff. Uh, so I like the characters. I like the narrative. It's fun to unlock stuff. It's fun to like get new stuff. And then the expedition mode itself is cool. Like, I like this. It's not the same way they did it or quite the same way they did it in Aeon's End. It's kind of its own thing. This is pretty neat. You know, I don't think I necessarily use them to their full ability, but like the combo, especially with three and four players, I think being able to pay attention to other people's turns more is neat. Uh, I didn't get the invention for one of the characters, but like having like a more powerful card that only you can level up into. I like all of this. I think, uh, you know, it's still great for one-off play, but if you want to have something a little bit meatier, like with a little bit more of a campaign feel, this does it really well. So yeah, I, <laughs> I hate to say it, they didn't pay me for this, but I think this is a slam dunk set. This makes me like base Astronauts quite a lot more. Like literally, I, th I think I said in my review or the podcast, I don't remember where, I was like, man, if they just add like expeditions, <laughs> just like they had an Aeon Z to Astronauts, that was the only thing keeping me maybe saying I like Aeon Z more. Now that's gone. I definitely prefer Astrodites 100 times over compared to Aeon's End. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Uh, more Astrodites, good content. Really excited for it. Uh, go check out the crowdfunding page when it's up. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.